What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Sean Taylor, and I believe that artists should control their own destiny, which is why I bring information like this. Nipsey Hussle's 12 Tips to Build a Music Empire Independently. So if you don't know who Nipsey Hussle is, he's that guy that might you might have heard of when he sold that $100 mixtape, and Jay-Z bought like a 1,000 copies of the mixtape, but he also sold other copies of it. Um, so that's just a real short snippet. And how can somebody that's not really super known sell hundred dollar copies of the make tapes? We'll get into it and how he does it. Here's his tips. Like I talk about, I, I was I was in the streets. I had money. I had spots, and I sold all my jewelry, sold my cars, and bought studio equipment and devoted myself to it. And um, I made a lot of music. Majority of the stuff that was on Bullet Sing Out No Names One and Two, I made before my deal. Mm -hmm. Number one, commit. He got rid of all his chains and sold all his stuff, like he said, just because he knew he was going in a new direction. He didn't want to be on the streets no more. He's committed to his music. Number one, commit. Number two, collaborate. So, Kendrick, YG, Dom Kennedy, Nipsey Hussle himself, those guys all collaborated a lot in the beginning of their careers, particularly with each other, because they were in the same areas. And you could take advantage of this, too, because it allows you to build a fan base especially if you're in the city, so you can get the most out of the area that you're in. I got a few mentors that just put me on books and literature and all that. Big mm -hmm. Bob Francis, one of them. And so, um, you know, he, he, he told me about this book called Contagious. Contagious, uh-huh. Yeah, so I got to the second chapter of that, and it was just talking about how this, this restaurant owner in Philly started selling Philly cheesesteaks for $100 at his restaurant. And it just was like, it set off all type of conversation. Everybody was talking about it, then all type of influential people came through him and just wanted to check out why it was a hundred dollars like oprah came through and bought one david letterman bought one he got all type of exposure and publicity mm -hmm. and then it became like a staple and everybody started coming through supporting buying a hundred dollar cheese steak mm -hmm. so i put the book down and i was like yeah we got to do that with the album mm -hmm. nobody did that with music so this is how he came up with this hundred dollar mixtape or album idea studying he also mentioned having a mentor I suggest everybody get mentors. It's a helpful in career, build an empire, whatever you want to do. But study, study, study. He's looking for other information. A lot of people in the hip-hop game don't study. He's reading books, and he's actually using the information. Yeah, some people won't even go back and get it, though. If it's whack, mm -hmm. then, you know, you, you like, I ain't going to listen to it while I pay for it. I hear you. So I'm like, you know, I just wanted to test out what offering it free would do. Experiment. Right? Once again, like I said, not only is he studying... But he experimented and tested those ideas out, right? He not because not only did he have that hundred dollar copy that came with merch and a um, a free concert pass and things like that, but he also had a nine ninety nine copy that was just a streaming copy, and then he also had a free copy. He said he wanted to see what it did, and then he paid attention, which is also going right into this right here. When I came back from from uh, touring the world off TMC, I was like, you know, I know why they fucking with me. I'm like, I know what it is. It, it took me five, six mixtapes to really catch it, but I was like, I know why. I know I know what it is that they connected to. So Crenshaw was with me trying to just saturate the thing with a project with the with the with the type of rap and the type of music that they connected to before. I think that So this is that experimenting and paying attention. He had six mixtapes. Obviously you experiment in your own music, but then he paid attention to say, okay, throughout this entire process of all these mixtapes, I'm starting to realize exactly what they fuck with about me. Because once you do that, then you have all the power. You, you paid attention to the people, now you can give the people but what I mean, they want. I think it's your job to distinguish yourself. Branding is about your differences. Yeah, right, right. It's about it's shouting out your differences. It ain't about, you know, what's the same about and you. you know what I Exactly. Right? Just like that process. So once he paid attention, saw what they connect with, now he knows what his differences are. He knows what other people like about him. And he can give them more of that. So then they can give themselves more of them. And now he has these, this fan base that's growing. That's tip number five from Nipsey. But it'd be the right move for you. Yeah, they know and my philosophy. Dictate, they yeah. know my business model. I need to be involved as a partner. I need to be an owner. I heard and that. And they know that we ain't going to have convos if it don't start like that. And that's tip number six. It gets real heavy. Oops, seven. When it comes to that ownership, did I skip something? I don't know. But when it comes to Nipsey, he's super strong on the ownership, and we'll see a little bit more on this later. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But I'm at the table at every negotiation. I'm, I'm in control of everything to do with my, my brand. To me, that's the power. That's where the, you know, the, the side conversation turns into new opportunities. 
Right. So not only does being an owner mean you own something, because but there's been this additional benefit when it comes to the power that it affords you. So when you want to think about ownership, if you don't own, you're not you don't have the power for decision making. If you don't have the power for decision making, you're not going to be in decision making meetings. In those meetings, that's when the big wigs, that's when the people who really make those moves are meeting. Right. So if you can't be in that meeting, you're not going to build relationships for the people who could really make stuff happen. Yeah, it's nice to deal with some kind of distributor or just your manager or a and r but if you can't have that meeting with the guy who runs let's just say disney or some kind of huge company that might even just want to license all your stuff and give you all these additional opportunities then you're missing out on opportunities which is what most artists do i'm not trading ownership of the only asset i have which is my intellectual property that's his music it's pretty much true for every artist all they got is their music. Don't give it up. Not go anywhere else. Why do you feel like, man, you know what I need to I need to build my own compound? Man, I just believe in ownership. Yeah. You know what I mean? I believe in, you know, um, investing in yourself. When you make money, you know, you can easily go a lot of places. But I just feel like, you know, your foundation should be strong. He's super consistent with this. So he made his own compound, his own recording studio, like four recording studios worth in one studio. So I think he had like four session rooms. But when you do something like this, you have to invest in yourself. When you own, then you want to invest, then own more, invest, own more, continue this cycle. And this is how you slowly but surely build an empire. And next thing you know, you buy out the building. You are helping and putting other people on. That's what really, really having an empire is like. Data. So how I know he's really super into data. He had one conversation when he was talking about him using Ryan Leslie's Superphone app, right? And this really, really tracks fan data. It's one thing you need to really collect fan data, generally speaking, but this goes to the extent of if you come up to Nipsey and say you're his number one fan, he could look in his phone in about 10 seconds, figure out exactly if you are his number one fan or not. He could just see his data and say, hey, well, actually, such and such in Tokyo is my number one fan. You're number 76. Because it's basing on how much you've supported him, how many shows you've gone to, how much, how many albums you bought. And he has all that data at the tip of his fingers. This kind of stuff is great because let's just say you had a thousand fans. If you had a thousand fans, like a thousand like super, super fanatical fans that bought every single thing you put out. Even if he has a hundred thousand people that like it, but only a thousand people buy everything. He knows if he puts out something for $120. At least those thousand people are going to buy it, and I'm going to make $120,000 off those people at the very least. You know, the game changed. Like, we in control to an extent. You know, we got the internet. We got um, a global village that we can deliver content to. You know what I'm saying? And, and, it's, and it's worldwide. You can tour, and you can sell your merch, and you can build businesses. So if you're not stuck on, you know, being a fame junkie and being some type of socialite, you can look at the game for what it is and eat, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, Build something that rides slowly. Tip number 10, ignore the bullshit. A lot of artists do not do this. They're huge on the fame junkie, socialite lifestyle. And what happens is, or what's going to happen to a lot of them, is what happened to people in past generations where the OGs had these great stories of what was and who they used to hang with, but they're not on top anymore. They're right there sitting next to you because they didn't keep making the moves and they didn't make the right moves, which was focusing on the money. In addition to the art, as opposed to just saying, hey, I want to be seen. That's what a lot of people do. Ignore that fame stuff. If you're telling me that all y'all gauging is sound scanning billboard, we don't need y'all. Y'all getting an eviction notice. What Nipsey's saying by this is, hey, I don't care if I'm on your main media outlets. I don't care if I'm on your radio stations, none of this stuff. In which he's on none of that. He's only had like one radio um, song for real, for real. And he doesn't need that because... He can get to his fans, which means he can get to his money. If he can get to his money, he can build and then create more music and then get back to his fans and get more money. If you got your fans and you got your money, you don't need anybody else. All that other stuff is an illusion. I swear. How much you get paid, the, uh, the, the writer that wrote that? Mm -hmm. I pay them type of salaries to my employees at my business that got felonies and that can't get jobs. Mm -hmm. No disrespect. Mm -hmm. So who's the underachiever? I own my company. I own the, the asset of this whole industry, which is your your masters, your, your intellectual property, you know what I'm saying, your publishing. So, you know, 
you you your metrics and what you gauging as an achievement is actually like a peon or underboss way of looking at it because you know like I'm not in it for the fame. Everybody want to be seen and, and, and held at the highest regard, obviously. But, you know, you can't cash that out. You can't take that to the bank. Well, you can in, in other ways. But, mm -hmm. you know, what's the asset? What what do the labels do it for? They do it for the ownership. They do it for the for the catalog, for the mailbox money. And so, you know, I think if you up on what's what's going on, you will, you will respect that. You wouldn't say a dude underachieving for that. Yeah, for you. See, I play longer clips with Nipsey than the other videos because the stuff he says is so real. Don't think like a peon. What he was referring to as a complex magazine writer saying, hey, this guy is underachieving. They rated him one of their top 10 underachieving rappers. And he's like, no, you measuring people off of this little media buzz and this, you know, this little fame over here. But no, nah, man, I, I can I could pay you if I wanted to. I could hire 10 of you if I wanted to because I'm over here winning with what matters. Paying attention to the mailbox money. What he was saying with that part is record labels. They pay attention to mailbox money, which is that money when I wake up, it's in my, a new check is in my mailbox, and that just keeps happening, keeps happening. But most artists, they don't focus on that. That's why we have all these past stories of artists being ripped off. He's saying, nah, he has both of those things. He has the art and he has the money, and he's going to stay focusing on that. He doesn't need to get complex to give him an A-OK. -okay. You know, it's just like a metaphor for being a long haul. Right. You don't judge it by one leg of the race, because if you judge me by my first leg, you'd have been like, you know, Nip the biggest dude on the West. Mm -hmm. And then if you judge me by the second leg, you might be like, Nip didn't drop an album and disappointed. But if you judge me by the third leg, you're going to be like, Nip an independent mogul. Yeah. But if yeah, you yeah, step yeah. back and look at it as a, as a marathon, like this dude came from, you know, single house family, a gang banging environment, you know what I'm saying? Didn't graduate high school mm -hmm. and been through the bullshit. Of so what he's saying here is, hey, this is everything. If you put him in a nutshell, it's a marathon. It's a long game because building an empire is a long game. Ask Jay Z, ask. P. Diddy, P. Diddy literally started running marathons because he's obsessed with the idea of a marathon because he knows he's playing a long game, right? It's a marathon, so it doesn't matter about the ups and downs. They they will affect you in the time being, but really, if you know you're playing a long game, that helps you not get caught up in some of that BS. When I said ignore the BS, right? Keep that in mind. That's number 12, and now we're going to go out with a quote from Nipsey on a mission. Your worst enemy is idle time. That just means, hey, don't waste your time on this BS. Point blank. Subscribe if it was helpful. I'm going to go out with a quick video um, just of Nipsey talking about some other stuff because I still think it's so dope and so helpful.